A new study conducted by researchers at the University of Oxford provides some insight into possible long-term effects of COVID-19. So joining me now to break that all down for us is Dr. Neha Narula from Stanford Healthcare. So tell us, what does this study show? Yes, um, so exciting research came out of the University of Oxford just last week. And in particular, what they looked at were neurological and psychiatric conditions post-COVID infection. They analyzed about 1.3 million patients, looked through their health records, and this um, particular group included both adult and children. Um, and they studied them from January 2020 to April 2022, and then compared them to a control group in which the, num the same number of patients that had other respiratory illnesses, so outside of COVID, were examined. And what they found were that um, COVID patients were indeed at risk for neurological and psychiatric conditions up to two years post-infection. Um, specifically in adults, they uh, noticed that there was a higher risk of cognitive deficit, or what we commonly call brain fog, um, psychosis, uh, seizures, and dementia. In particular, people over the age of 65 were at higher risk of dementia. Um, researchers did also look at levels of anxiety and depression, and although it was increased um, initially, uh, typically the levels of anxiety and depression tend to go down to about normal after two months of um, a post infection. In children, though, um, they did notice that compared to adults, they were less likely to develop neurological and psychiatric conditions. But when they compared children with COVID and children with respiratory illnesses outside of COVID, they did notice a slightly increased risk of um, epilepsy, stroke, uh, insomnia, and brain fog. Um, they also noticed that, you know, because this was done over two years with different variants, there was different risks. So the Delta variant, although um, infections were less severe, did uh, have more disorders associated with it post-COVID. And they did also see a similar uh, risk of neurological and psychiatric conditions with Delta and Omicron. So the study wasn't perfect, um, but I think what we need to take away from this is that we are still going to see some post-COVID um, sick quality, especially neurological, psychiatric. And as we continue to learn more about um, this particular disease um, as time progresses, I would like to emphasize to our viewers, you know, we have to continue to protect ourselves, continue the masking, continue the protective measures, get vaccinated and boosted if you haven't already. Okay, and the COVID booster targeting the Omicron variant should be available soon. What kind of trials need to be completed before those shots are offered to the public? Yes, so this is a perfect segue, right? Um, vaccine booster is very important. Um, now, the uh, Pfizer and Moderna both have submitted data last week for emergency use authorization for their new boosters. And these are slightly different from what we have in the market right now. They are what we call bivalent vaccines. So they have uh, mRNA technology encoding uh, the spike protein for the original COVID strain, as well as for the BA4 and BA5 booster strains. Um, what we know as of now is that data that they submitted um, were was based on a similar bivalent vaccine. It wasn't for the BA4, BA5 booster that's currently being tested in humans still, but it was similar in the sense that it was an Omicron variant, BA1, that was seen earlier this year. Additionally, they are also presenting preclinical data in animal studies. And all of this has um, looked very promising, which is why both Pfizer and Moderna have gone to the FDA and are seeking approval. Um, the FDA will be meeting later this week to sift through the data, see if it is enough uh, to push this forward, then to the CDC, who will then review this data. So potentially, if all goes well, we could see this um, these vaccines be available as early as early to mid-September. But we will have to wait and find out what the FDA says uh, later this week. And finally, how effective are the COVID vaccines in young children? Yes. Um, so our babies, toddlers, and preschoolers, they were the last to be eligible for this vaccine. Um, Pfizer had approved, uh, a Pfizer vaccine was approved earlier this summer um, for children over the age of six months, all the way up to four years. And it was based off of preliminary data that showed effectiveness against symptomatic COVID-19. Now, um, because it was preliminary data, they were asked to continue to monitor the efficacy, and they have now come back just recently and reported that their vaccine is 73.2% effective against COVID. Um, and I'd like to add, 
especially with how contagious these Omicron subvariants are, that is a pretty great number. So if you have little ones at home and if you're waiting for more data before you got them vaccinated, we have it now as we start this new fall season and head into the winter, I urge you all to get um, your little ones vaccinated to keep them safe. All right, a lot of really good information there. Dr. Nehanarula with Stanford Healthcare. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.